हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सॉटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी नाइस टू हैव यू बैक रिसेंटली आई हैड मेड अ पोस्ट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम लेट मी सी व्हाट वाज द नेम उप्स या सिक्स थिंग्स योर हॉरोस्कोप इज इनकेपेबल ऑफ रिवीलिंग मेनी टाइम्स व्हेन वी गो टू एन एस्ट्रोलॉजर वी माइट हैव दीज क्वेरीज बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी के नॉट गिव अ डायरेक्ट आंसर फ्रॉम our own horoscope in regards to these questions okay i'll explain what 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 are these factors because uh, when whenever we are going for a consultation it's important to understand uh, what we can expect okay otherwise we are disappointed okay now of course this does not mean that we cannot get any idea about all this but in general you cannot get a specific answer like you know yes no good bad 10% 20% that that is not possible okay so what are uh, six things that our own horoscope is incapable of revealing okay so the first thing is type or nature of your spouse yes you cannot find that from your horoscope this is unpopular and people do not like to hear this but i see this all the time you know my uh, venus is in 7th house will my spouse be very beautiful my jupiter is in 7th will my uh, spouse be very religious you know mercury is in 7th so will my spouse be uh from a business family well uh, see uh, planets in the 7th house they can tell us that during their dashas we might meet a particular person who might have certain traits related to mercury but that's not a guarantee that your spouse will have those traits because for example marriage is seen from the 2nd 7th and 11th houses so suppose you have mercury in the 7th but you have rahu in the second and rahu dasha starts you might meet a spouse who is uh, who may be a bit uh, unconventional or from a different caste creed uh, culture religion different tradition different language different ethnicity okay but even then it's not guaranteed because there may be a planet uh, saturn for example uh, who is in the nakshatra of rahu okay so suppose uh, saturn in your chart is sitting in shatvisha nakshatra okay for example and your rahu in your birth chart is in the second house of your bhav chart okay so then saturn can also give marriage so now uh, it becomes very complicated just by seeing uh, okay uh, seventh house Mar uh, mercury then uh, you know rahu second house uh, this planet is here that planet is here so best is uh, that you no which planets can give you marriage first that that is more important because when you know that time then anyways the person will appear rather than i tell you oh you will uh, meet your uh, wife in a coffee shop you know so now wherever you are going to a coffee shop imagine some somebody comes and asks you something and that person is a female you will start thinking right oh maybe this is my wife you know maybe a future wife <laughs> so so do you think it actually works like now of course there can be exceptions and things can work out sometimes but uh, just to say okay uh, venus is in my seventh you know so my spouse will be very uh, attractive well not necessarily it doesn't work uh, always most of the times it doesn't work okay so k2 in the seventh you know the person will be chinese or japanese you know or from nepal no i have seen astrologers do this but i have seen it it doesn't work now it can work in some cases if there are multiple indications okay uh, but this is very rare and even if it works you cannot literally say that yes uh, mercury is in my 7th rahu is in my 2nd uh, uh, so therefore the person will be either a gemini lagna virgo lagna or you know like uh, some 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 aquarius lagna because rahu corals aquarius along with saturn so you can't say that nor can you say oh my uh, jupiter is in the navamsha 7th house you know so the person will be very religious or from a finance background no, even that doesn't work i have seen okay but yes the planets in 2nd 7th and 11th they can give an idea of uh, there could be they could give you an idea that yes there could be some link somewhere but just because they are there it doesn't mean that is your spouse and to take the corresponding ascendance it's it's laughable okay so if you have venus to say that my spouse is taurus or libra or taurus or libra moon sign libra moon sign ascendant taurus moon sign ascendant 
no that doesn't work okay and if, if i tell you you know oh your uh, wife is you know taurus ascendant you know then anytime you see some uh, i mean uh, some girl who has taurus ascendant you will start think oh maybe she's my wife but uh, does it work uh, honestly it doesn't okay it doesn't work 99% of the times it doesn't 1% of the times it can work you you may somebody may write in the comments no you are speaking lies you know i have venus here in my seventh house and my spouse is a taurus or a libra and well that that's great if it worked for you it's great but when we are talking of astrology we are talking of a science which should work uh, for at least 80 to 90 percent of the cases okay like water is h2o wherever you go it's h2o right almost <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> so that that's the use of saying that that's what we mean when we say astrology is a science okay so next what is the next uh, thing that your horoscope cannot tell location or circumstances where you will meet your spouse now again uh, this is all flooded in the internet you know where will you meet your spouse you know uh, if if there is uh, if uh, you have pisces you know you you will meet your spouse in a sea you know somewhere near the sea you know mm, okay yeah sounds sounds very fancy right but it unfortunately doesn't work now again 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 as i said you know if your seventh lord is in Pisces, some people say, no, no, the opposite of where your seventh lord is, you know, there you will meet the person, you know. So, for example, uh, if your seventh lord is in Virgo, then opposite to that is Pisces, you may meet them uh, somewhere uh, where, you know, it's like a sea or ocean because that's what Pisces represents. Well, honestly, uh, frankly, deep down in my heart, I have not seen that they work always, okay. Now, of course, they can, again, as I said before, they can give you some idea, you know, if maybe if the third lord is associated and the twelfth lord is associated and uh, the seventh house is associated in Adasha and you are going to a sea, you are going to a trip, you know, and then maybe that, that there is a possibility that time because the seventh house is there in that Antar Dasha or Mahadasha or even Pratyantar that you might meet your spouse when you go near a sea, but just because your seventh lord is in pisces or in virgo uh, you say you will um, no that that doesn't work again as i said there can be exceptions but for 90 percent cases it doesn't work okay number three health of your spouse or family members ah, of course we can speak of health but only about you from your chart we can only speak about you okay so we cannot speak how long your father will live or how long your mother will live. Okay, yes. Now, let me make it clear. There are some indications in a horoscope which tell us that in particular dashas, um, somebody may uh, leave your body in the family. Okay, uh, some elderly person that that is possible to predict. Uh, but then that person could be anybody. That person could be your could be. Now, God forbid your mother, father or grandfather, grandmother, it could be your sister or spouse or how, any anybody, you know, or it could be somebody like below you also, like your um, elder, your younger brother, sibling or your son and daughter, uh, God forbid not. But uh, the thing is, we, we can't like you, you can't just say, oh, I, I will predict the longevity of my father or mother from my chart. That is something which we should avoid doing. So if we uh, want to know about the longevity, we have to see it from that person's horoscope. Okay, we have to go to that person's chart. We have to open and we have to see what is going on. How do you analyze the longevity? But uh, from our chart, no, it doesn't work, unfortunately, or rather fortunately it doesn't work. Okay, number, this is what number, <laughs> number next, <laughs> quality of one to one family relationships. <clears throat> Now, many times people ask, uh, okay, uh, how will be my relationship with, uh, how will be the relationship with my sister, you know, uh, with my mother, with my father? Uh, well, these are also questions which we cannot directly answer, like yes or no. Now, again, as I said, um, we can get some idea. So, for example, if the third house is very badly afflicted and a bad dasha is also running and the dasha is also connected to the third house then we can know that there are some there could be some problems with the siblings okay uh, but then for that you have to check that person chart and see if they are also having a problem with their third house in general and also in the dasha so if you have three siblings then 
you can't exactly say uh, and to say you know third house is younger sibling 11th house is you know elder sibling you know that that also doesn't work i mean from a practical perspective it doesn't work i have seen yeah i mean you you, you take 100 charts and you analyze you know if there's a malefic in the 11 does it mean that your relationship with your elder sibling is not nice what if you are the eldest you know then what happens right so some people say oh then it's the cousin uh, somebody says it's not cousin it's side of the mother side of the father is very complicated so if a person has a very uh, serious burning concern about their relationship with their father mother or you know uh, brother or uh, anybody somebody in the in-laws if it's if it's a very burning question if it's something uh, which the person is very much uh, eager to know okay then then it's imperative that you not just see your chart and blindly say oh he has you know uh, this planet in this house eighth house is in-laws you know you have uh, rahu in eighth you know your in-laws will cheat you or you will cheat your in-laws but <coughs> be very specific so if you say want to say oh how will be my relationship with my father-in-law or with my mother-in-law okay then you have to see the mother-in-law's chart okay then you have to see the father-in-law's chart and from by seeing both you can get a clearer perspective okay so uh, please do not do this oh uh, how will be my relationship with my in-laws you know that um, first of all if you do not have in-laws yet then that is like another level you know it's like bizarre how can we say that but of course, if there are malefics, we can say that you need to be careful when you deal with in-laws, okay? But that doesn't mean, I mean, there are so many millions of people, maybe even a billion people maybe who have malefics in uh, you know, in the 8th house. But does it mean that their relationship with the in-laws is destroyed just because of that one placement? Yes, this is what is going on in astrology and especially in YouTube. Malefic in the 8th house destroys your relationship with your in-laws. That is false. That is not true. That is true in some cases, but for that, the other prospect, other things also has to support, you know, like afflicted second house, then Jupiter has to be very badly smashed somewhere in the Navamsha, and there are like 100 things which I can say, but just by seeing one thing and just by seeing your own horoscope, you should not say that your relationship with the entire in-laws is spoiled, okay? In the in-laws, you know, there's mother-in-law, father-in-law. It could be that you have a bad relationship with the mother-in-law, but it could happen that you have a equally very good relationship with the father-in-law. That is also possible or the other way around also. Okay, or maybe with the, both the parent-in-laws, you have a bad relationship, but with your sister-in-law, brother-in-law, you know, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, you have a good relationship. Okay, so therefore, uh, please do not pass a judgment by seeing one house and what to speak of one house just by seeing one chart okay and if you are passing a judgment by seeing one uh, house uh, it, it's it you are bound to fail okay in your predictions okay so this this i already said you know longevity of your spouse and family members this uh, this this you cannot predict okay health and longevity so this is uh, earlier was health this is longevity okay so please look at their chart and do the analysis if there is something very critical and i think this is the last okay your family status at birth so for example um if you have certain very good yogas then it can it can show to some extent that you are born in a wealthy family or you know very cultured family uh, depending on what kind of energy is there but now uh, a wealthy family now how do you define wealthy you know somebody who is like you know born in the family of you know bill gates or ambani or adani or you know uh, like Warren buffett or uh, so they, they are like you know multi multi billionaires but then there are millionaires uh, you know then then sorry from multi-billionaires there are billionaires you know who is like 1 billion 2 billion net worth you know somebody like donald trump you know like i think his net worth is between 1 and 10 uh, billion um, and then there is like you know multi-millionaire 500 million 600 million uh, and then there is like you know 5 million 10 million 50 million uh, you know like 8 million then there is 1 million then there is like you know two two hundred thousand dollar three hundred thousand dollars so Okay. can you exactly say from the chart you know that his family uh, his or her family when he was born was having 100 crores like or you know like 10 million uh, or for example you say 
okay uh, he had maybe a million but then when you say he does it mean his father or the mother or grandfather grandmother who is it so you you can't say that so many times people wonder oh uh, what will be the status uh, during the birth you know and uh, also another thing uh, this is something which i did not mention in the post but what i see is people always think that birth of somebody or bringing somebody into their house is related to some good event or bad event in life okay so for example they say oh when my uh, first son was born you know my elder son my elder child then i got a promotion or i was fired from my job and i don't know what happened you know after his birth my career started going up 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 like this or you know my career started going down 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 so is there some bad omen you know was this person my enemy in my past life because of which my uh, <laughs> career went down you know or whatever you know yes that could be that person could be your enemy but uh just because you you were fired uh, in your profession uh, from your job uh, around the time when your uh, son or daughter was born does it it does not necessarily mean that that person is the enemy from a past life and you know having them will be bad at your house similarly people do this all the time with pets okay like people say okay uh, i have pets here you know like ye kutta jab aaya mera promotion ho gaya <laughs> when i brought this dog i got promoted to a very senior role so does it mean that after 2 3 years if i buy another dog i'll get another promotion so what do you think uh, do you think this uh, will work or this should work or this can work now of course there are 10 people who will write in the comments you know no actually it works you know when i brought this cat or this snake or this uh, whatever um, uh, dog or whatever some pet you know i got married i met the love of my life well well that's great if it happened but that happens not because the pet has come to your house automatically you know some magic happens in your life it happens because you are running a favorable dasha that time and in that dasha there is marriage or there is you know career progress or uh, downfall in career along with a uh, along with the bringing of a pet so both the things are combined okay but maybe uh, then your antar dasha changes after 2 3 years and then uh, you have a bad period you know and that time you have another yoga for buying another pet okay bring another pet so then this time you bring another pet and then this time your career collapses and then you say oh my first pet was lucky the second was not all right so please stay away from these uh, vague assumptions lot of generalizations in the name of astrology uh, especially in youtube astrology so now uh, please look at the chart and follow one golden rule which is one person one horoscope okay so from our chart we can only speak about ourselves we cannot say about you know our uh, spouse you know we can't say about our brother sister i know it's unpopular and people don't like to hear but why i am saying this is because many times people do consultations uh, as astrologers they expect they, they say oh your moon is in debility your relationship with, with your mother is ruined okay but it doesn't work you know i know so many people who have moon in scorpio um, who have very good relationship with their mothers okay but of course that will have some repercussion somewhere and our job as an astrologer is to find out where that repercussion is uh, and uh, how can we rectify it by giving some remedies or by doing lifestyle changes okay so therefore one person one horoscope and please stay away from over generalizations and um, vague uh, assumptions you know this is there you see one placement and you decide the entire story this is criminal we should not do this okay this is this is like uh, astrology's original sin okay saturn in the 7th marriage is related no it does not delay all the time it can but in certain cases it may not do that so uh, it's very easy to say saturn is in 7th marriage is delayed but can you do a comprehensive analysis can you take all factors into account and see what is going on if that is something you can do then you are on the right track you are learning astrology from the right source okay otherwise um, it is uh, at best guessing okay and worst case you your predictions fail okay but it's not about predictions it's about you know helping somebody if if it if it is not possible then uh, how do you do it okay so if somebody has queries about other people then 
you have to take their chart into consideration you can't just say oh this person has this so this will happen no if both the charts indicate something similar and then you might warn the person that yeah maybe something of this sort can happen so be cautious and conscious okay but otherwise uh, it's not the best thing to do okay thank you very much uh, if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down in the description section and yes if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video please click the thumbs up and share this video with somebody who you see may be thinking in these lines okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you